Attention listeners, this podcast is rated R for mature content and explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, Lit Talkers, and welcome to episode three of the Lit Talkers podcast, where we are going to discuss Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. My, I'm Cassie. My current read is Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. I'm Holly. I'm currently reading A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. I'm Tara, and I'm currently re-listening to the audiobook of Binding 13. And I'm Jennifer, and I'm currently reading Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. So we're obviously going to talk about Den and Dusted by Lila Sage today. Mm -hmm. And it is a cute little cowboy romance, which I don't know about you guys, but I'm about to hyperfixate our cowboy <laughs> romances for the next couple of months. So don't mind my good reads. Did you get the $7.99 one we found the other day? No, but Holly was showing us one a minute ago. Yes, hold please. <laughs> We'll let her get that one pulled back up. So the one that Tara is talking about, I did take a picture of it because I will be uh, listening to it. I thought I took a picture of it. It is How to Kiss a Cowboy by Joanne Kennedy. So um, definitely going to be on the list. What? Her name sounds familiar. Joanne Kennedy? What I don't know. She, maybe I'm, I'm no, just babe. crazy. I don't I'm know. not on good reads. I was trying to see we the almost picture, bought this but... for you, Holly. What? We almost bought this for you, this book for you, the other day, Cassie oh, and I. Oh, yeah. The one <laughs> this one. <laughs> Oh, oh, that looks. Oh, that looks, looks like a book that I would not enjoy. That but looks, that looks like a book that one of our moms would keep. You know, yes, on her bookshelf. Yes, yeah. exactly. One of the ones that we talked about yes. in the uh, in the first episode, I believe. Um, the one that was just recommended to me on Kindle Unlimited was "Rain Me In." It's called um, the Cow the Cowboys of Nighthawk. So I guess it's book one of one, but it might become a series. And it's um, a small town Lake Brothers best friend cowboy romance with a plus size female main character. So I'm uh, I'm down. It says it's 332 pages. So I'm probably gonna add that to my eb my tbr uh, since I dug this cowboy romance, even though I really didn't expect to. Uh, there's another cowboy romance I read uh, at the end of last year. It was Flawless by Elf Elsie Silver. It was one of those. But big, didn't you say that you didn't? I did not like okay, it. Okay, so uh, it was I'm one of those book talk failures for me. I feel like I need to stop listening to book talk. But it was another cowboy romance, which I was like really hesitant on going into Down and Dusted because like yeah. I was like, I hated Flawless. I loved this book. Yeah, <laughs> this one was this one was a good like breath of fresh air for me. So what did everybody rate it? Um, I rated a five out of five on me Goodreads. Too. Same. I think on Goodreads, I rated it four stars. In in real life, I'd probably rate it four and a half stars out of five. I think I did five because it just was so yeah. quick and easy and just fun. It was effortless, like effortless, like re listening or not even, I didn't even listen reading. to it, reading into it. Yeah. I did it on my Kindle. I think I read it in two it, days and I, I don't read <laughs> books in two days. So. I read it within like, I think 12 hours. Yeah. Oh my like, gosh. I started it the night yeah. before and finished it that next day. So. Yeah, I I listened to this one while I was on a road trip, and I listened to it within two days. So it was it was a real quick, easy read, um, listen. But it was it was very cute, and I just I just don't give romances five stars. I mean, it's probably as close as, to a five star as it's going to get. I think the only one that I've rated five stars is the Seven Year Slip, and that one was good. I, I liked. Okay, so these. They're on a different level because the seven-year slip, I feel like you had to think about a little bit more, and it it it, it required a little bit more brain There's power. mystery too that yes ties into yes what like you're normally hop. used to. Yeah. But this this and the deal by L. Kennedy were two books that I really really liked. That I don't think I rated the deal as high as I rated this. I one. think I rated them about the same because the thing that I liked about these books is that there's just not a whole lot of drama. That's my least favorite mm -hmm. part, and we'll get into some things we don't like in romance uh, novels next yeah. episode. I only gave but the one deal of the four. one of my worst things that I hate is the third act breakup, and especially if it's just because like there's drama. I just I just don't like the drama. I don't live for the drama. I hate when an adult book's drama is like middle school esque. Yeah. Yes. Because I'm like, I have not like dated somebody, broke up with somebody, dated somebody, broke up with them since I, like sixth grade is yeah. when I did that. Yeah. Because you date people for like a week and you're like, oh no, he went and touched some girl's hair. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like. It's immature. I don't, I don't need to read about that with adult relationships. <laughs> what book was it that we read? I don't know what it was, but it's specifically in my mind where like the female main character stopped talking to the main male character for a week or two over uh, like almost nothing and that really was like 
This did is we, stupid. Did we read it? I I think so. I'm just trying to think. Was it? Well, okay, so there's a difference. Was it one of the loves? No. Theoretically, hypothetically, oh. hypothesis. I think no, it was theoretically. The, the vampire book. My roommate is a vampire. Was it that one? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that there's also where there's third, <laughs> where's their third act breakup. There's also third person breakup. So, uh, which is one of my icks. I don't like when someone comes in. It's like, say uh, you and Matt, which is her husband. Yes. Uh, we're just beginning dating. Uh-huh. And I came in and I told you that I knew Matt from four years ago and I didn't think that he was all that mm. and yeah. bread and butter. Okay. And you took me for my word, but I was just jealous of maybe your relationship or something had happened four yeah. years ago. Well, Matt's grown from then, right? But you take the heart, third, act, third person breakup. You break up with him because of what I said. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I don't like it. I don't like third act breakups. I don't like third person breakups. That's one thing that is n- <laughs> not my thing. Yeah, yeah, not a fan of that either. So that's one thing that du- Dun and Dusted did not have. Yeah, they did nope, not it, have, they didn't have a, any of this. No, no. third and act I loved breakup. It, it was yeah, so yeah. uncomplicated. It was, it was very, yeah. it was just so feel good. It, it was. was. It was great. Um, the trope for Dun and Dusted, if you have not read it and you're, you know, you're listening to us, was Brother's Best Friend. Uh, which Emmy is our main character, and she has two brothers, Gus and Wes, who Gus is Luke, who is the male main character. That is Gus's best friend. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. They basically grew up together. Luke had kind of a little bit of a rough life. Also, we haven't mentioned it, but this is not a spoiler-free episode. So, um, you know, proceed with caution from this point forward. So Luke kind of had a little bit of a rough life, and he basically grew up with Emmy and Gus and Wes and with that raised him. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. pretty Basically, much. Yeah. Um and I think that that plays such a big part in this book and one of the things that I absolutely loved and I really enjoyed was how much support mm-hmm. Emmy had from like yeah. The places that she didn't think she was going to have support. Like, you find out, and it hints really early on, that, like, her dad knows that she and Luke are kind of together. And Mm -hmm. he doesn't say anything. He just lets her know, like, Luke has changed. (laughs) He's not the young, dumb kid that he used to be. And Teddy, too. I I love the dynamic between Luke and Teddy. The fact that, like... who's Teddy? The The, uh, Emmy's best best friend. friend. The best character in the whole book. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> Teddy, Teddy is a side character that she also grew up in the same town mm-hmm. as all of them. Her dad was a um, ranch hand, I guess is what you call him. Yeah, ranch yeah. yeah he was a retired rock star. A farm hand um, from Emmy's dad. And so Emmy and Teddy grew up together. Yeah. Um, because in these kind of books that the hands of the farm live in a house on the farm. Um, so he, you know, I guess Teddy and him lived there, I would think. I don't think so. I think they just lived maybe, close. Oh, yeah. maybe they did. Yeah. Well, um, I'm thinking like Yellowstone, you know. Like I was just going to say Yellowstone <laughs> style for real. Well, I think that they real. did used to kind of maybe. like, I think it is kind of like that because in it, it keeps referring, well, like now Luke is only here like Monday through Thursday because he has all this other stuff he has to do in his own place now. And so yeah, I feel like it is kind of like if you've seen Yellowstone, like yeah. you kind of have not that that's exactly the world that I saw. That's what this, I, that's without what I thought, too. I oh, Luke Yellow Casey, drama, Casey Dutton. So. <laughs> oh, Casey. <laughs> so but minus the drama. Yeah, minus the drama. Yeah, minus, minus the drama, you know, the drugs yeah. and the shootings and stuff but like all that. The, all the hair and the eyes. Yes, yes. True. I would say, yeah, um, like physical because <laughs> okay. people always, I don't ever see famous people's faces when I'm reading. Like we've had this discussion with other friends before mm-hmm. where they say, oh, who did you picture as this guy or this girl? And it's not, I don't see anybody, dis- it's like I see the person, but I don't really see a face or it's not really particular like yeah it's not particularly anybody but seeing like luke and casey dutton yeah i could get it i could get it i you know i think the best part of this book was definitely that dynamic between all the characters so you had a yeah. really really strong family dynamic and then you had friends turn into family mm-hmm. so i would consider teddy i would just consider this a, like a, just a family dynamic book because i yes. consider teddy one of them um especially when teddy's dad Ugh, when it was her birthday and he mm-hmm. made her like her special dessert and stuff yes. like you just get mm-hmm. that home 
feeling yeah and it's just it sticks with you i i really loved when she called her dad out and she was like dad don't jump into the guests is you know (laughs) such a fine young man speech and i'm like because i i can't wait for gus and teddy Oh my gosh, Gus and Teddy is going to be It's going to be good, so but good. so Lila Sage did come out. There's going to be four books in this um, little town, in this little romance um, books that she's writing. Meadowlark, but the, right? Huh? It's Meadowlark is the town name, I, I think. That yeah, I think so, about. yes. Um, I didn't write that down, unfortunately. Do we know if that's a real place? It is Meadowlark. I don't know. Hold on. Um, it can't be Meadowlark. Well, like Rebel Blue, the name of the ranch probably isn't a real ranch, but yeah, that's true. Meadowlark. Yeah, I mean, it I could don't know. be. Seems kind of. Um, I want to go. I know for anyone who read this book that really related with Gus and Teddy, I'm low key pissed that they're not the next book. Listen, their tension, mm-hmm. their tension and banter was oh, top tier. Yeah. I am just ready for them to just bang and let's. Get yeah, it out. That's, that's gonna, gonna be, be a true, a true enemy. I was lovers. just gonna say, is it really <laughs> enemies? But I'm really looking forward to Wes's book. Wes and his freaking uh, dog Ada? Waylon. Is that mm-hmm. his dog's name? Mm-hmm. Waylon. I don't. Maybe I don't remember the remember. Great Pyrenees mix. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, he name. just seems so sweet. Oh, he yeah. just seems like. Wes like was a big like the gulp most of sweet tea. They He's going to be a golden retriever, sub- man. Yes. He's going to be a cinnamon bun character, and I'm here oh, for it. Oh, maybe that's why I love I think, him, because I am also golden retriever. Because I also think that Ada, who came from Teddy, Teddy's the one that brings this newcomer Ada for the next book, and it comes out March 5th, is Swift and Saddled. Mm-hmm. Um, Ada is a newcomer to the Rebel Ranch, and or oh. Rebel Blue Ranch. Okay, so it is going to be on the same ranch. It's going to so be about Rebel Blue. Yep, so she's going to come in, and she's going to, from what we could see in the book, um, she's going to reconstruct Wes's project of the old house. Yeah, they're making a guest oh, yeah. ranch. Correct. So I know y'all were talking about Yellowstone. I used to watch Heartland, mm-hmm. which is technically a Canadian show, but it's about this ranch. There's like 14 seasons or something now. I never got quite never that far into it. it. Um, <laughs> but it's the main character is like a horse whisperer, and her sister's like coming in trying to like renovate and redo the ranch and turning it into a guest ranch. And so that's what this reminds me of. Again, I know y'all have your Yellowstone. Why but... are people always trying to say? Save the ranch. How many <laughs> books and movies have you seen where it's like, we gotta save the ranch for daddy? <laughs> okay, have you had farm for daddy. owned like a farm or a ranch though? It's rough. Like my great grandpa, he owned one and um, like, you know where uh, Lowe's is here? Yes. Uh-huh. So my great grandparents used to work on that farm all the time till it was gone and turned into a loans. Mm. Like, when I was a little kid, I was running around those fields, like, on a tractor on my great granny's lap and everything. So you're saying you would save the ranch? Yes. I'm I'm saying I would never buy a ranch. Like, I'm saying burn it before it even gets started. Burn it? (laughs) Burn it to the ground because it takes too much work. I remember being a kid and, like, eating, like, uh, what is it, French toast, like, out on the patio. And I look over and 10 feet from me, there's just a couple little cows just sitting there mooing at you. I'm I'm like, it's an experience. Like and then the suits it. pull up and put a for sale sign in the yard. But the ranch, yeah, but in, the ranch in this one did not need saving. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's not just, yet. He's just yeah. doing it to have Expand. his own. He wants his own project. He wants his own project. And that's what yeah. he really hutched on because Gus runs the ranch or the farm. And uh, Wes is kind of just looking for some place to fit and yeah. where he can yeah. puzzle in. Because Emmy's the only girl. So she gets daddy's love. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. that's that's daddy's girl. So, and Gus is his right-hand man. So yeah. what's Wes? So I th- I'm really excited for this book. I think we're actually going to read it maybe be, uh, for another podcast. I think Lila Sage is now, I think, a favorite for all of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, she was great. For an author. So that's going to be really exciting. But let's- oh, and we didn't mention that Emmy's real name is Clementine. And yeah, they, yes. um, when she first walks yeah. into the bar coming back home, that Luke owns. Luke and Luke owns the bar. He plays my darling Clementine yes. over yeah. the karaoke <laughs> machine, and that's how she knows that it's him. And that's how the book gets co- gets started. Which it confused yeah. me because Clementine is also the main character in Seven Year Slip. Oh, so shoot, it, is. it got me kind of like bamboozled. It because it's it's true. not a common no, name. It's not. So. And I think what's so 
it, also, Lila Sage is very young. Yeah. I did not like, I liked Emmy. I don't like her real name. I'm just going to call oh, her Oh, I Emmy. love Clementine. I, I'm just not a fan. But also, it like. It was on our baby name list. Oh, well. Good <laughs> for not going to lie. <laughs> but good for good you. Good for you. Uh, that's, that's a no for me. Um, I'm very glad we didn't choose it. But, but it was. Lila Sage is only like 20, she's under 25. Mm, and she's she wrote baby. this book, and now she has a book deal for four more books, or three more books in the Rebel Blue Ranch. That's amazing. Um, so I think that's awesome, but there are some parts of this story that I actually could see Lila's, uh, age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I could definitely see some of her age play into this. She wrote characters that were older than her, but yes. she's not experienced life like that, I guess, kind of. Example? Uh, ooh, I don't, off the top of my head, you Just a whole lie. vibe? Yeah. Just okay. like, I gotcha. like the whole vibe. I think she did really well. I think she mm-hmm. also played into a lot of people who don't like third act breakups. It's all over TikTok right now, or book talk. It's all over Goodreads. If you go to any book mm-hmm. that has a third act breakup, everyone is bitching about it. Yeah. So she, I think being so young, she took readers into account too. That could, you know. Yeah. So I liked it. I can't say anything bad about it. Um, I, I, like I, it, so. I kind of see what you're saying mm-hmm. because I feel like... That vibe where Teddy kept running to Luke. Yes. And, like, trying to, like, get him to confess that he was in love with her and, like, the smirks and the looks. And I feel like that's definitely, like, at 30 years old, that's not something that I would go do to. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but, and I see that, but. On the other side of things, like, I love that. Like, I love that Teddy, like, (laughs) took it upon herself to go be nosy. And one of my favorite things that she said was, um, I've got it right here. Um, They were talking, she gave Emmy the dress to wear to her birthday. Yes. And she's like, well, it's going to be a gift for me. And Emmy was like, how? And she said, just watching Luke Brooks fall to his knees the minute he sees you. And he does. And I was like, that is like, yes. (laughs) Like, absolutely. I loved, everybody was so supportive. There was no jealousy. Other than Gus, but I think Gus was a knee-jerk reaction. And I think he even said that too, but... Teddy wrangled him. Teddy. Yes, she did. She, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a really good book between Teddy and uh, Gus. The sexual tension is going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy, yes. I will say this. I feel like the whole story builds up that everybody on Rebel Blue is super supportive. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the whole, like, thing, I guess, or a big part of it is oh, these feelings are kind of coming out of nowhere and we are just going to see how it goes yeah. and we're not going to tell anybody because mm-hmm. we're afraid of how they might react. But through the story, you learn that like everybody just wants everybody to be happy. And then I feel like when there's a little bit of disagreement about things near the end, it doesn't really play into the character that was written for me. So for me, I have two older brothers and they don't give a shit. Yeah, about anything to do with me. Yeah. So for me, having Maybe that that's fa- why I feel that way too. No, well, for me, <laughs> yeah. having that family dynamic, and that's why I wrote in my notes, Gus's reaction to their relationship was gold to me because I longed for my brothers to give a shit who I dated or someone who hurt my feelings or broke my heart. He's a big brother. Yeah. That's what yes. big brothers in society. That's what they're supposed to supposed to do, to do. Mm-hmm. you yeah. you have a little sister you're supposed to watch out for her the industry has lied to us because all four of us have older brothers well who, mine are younger but still okay, regardless okay basically all of us three of us have older brothers and it's like mine would fight me over yeah. fighting somebody else <laughs> yeah. like mine, yeah. I'm not saying anything if hunter's listening to this i'm not saying anything bad but we've never had the kind of relationship where he is going to like go up to bat for me or like right. protect me from somebody Mm-mm. and I yeah my whole life I've longed for that mm-hmm. but honestly I don't know anybody in real life who has brothers like that so maybe yeah. it's just I, I don't it's just this whole thing that we've been fed I think that that's by the where, industry it's right. like conspiracy these novels man. are kind of like fantasies when it comes to family too it is and uh, yeah that's why I don't like reading romance because sometimes I feel like it's so unrealistic and mm. I think I said this in our group chat with somebody else the other day me and Cassie that if I were single and I were dating, I feel like reading romance novels might be a bad thing mm-hmm. because you're you're clinging to this idea, especially yeah. if it is too perfect. If it is like the deal or if it is like this, you're like, why can't I find somebody like that? Like, obviously, they exist because especially if you're somebody who gets so into reading that it becomes your whole life and 
it kind of blurs the lines of fantasy and reality. I feel like it would be really hard or it can to make your standards way high where exactly. you won't settle. Yeah. I yeah. think that's that's the yeah. reason I liked Gus's reaction so much because that is something I long for and I wish my brothers were there through a couple of my breakups because I had, you know, some guys that did not treat me the best. <laughs> and yeah. I definitely could have used my sister probably would have fought anyone she's younger than I am though. And she was right there the whole time. So she was kind of like my yeah. big brother, but not in the sense that Gus, I loved Gus's reaction. That's all I'm, that's yeah. all I'm yeah. I loved yeah. his reaction. I thought it was what a big brother was. And I even said to, uh, I don't know if it's Christina or if I said it to one of you guys, I even said, I'm ready for it. Like I'm ready for Gus to find out because I want him to punch Luke in the face because that's what big brothers do. You, but I Luke wanted didn't that. deserve that. Listen, like, poor Luke. Brother, Listen, but, yeah. It came out of nowhere though. Cause they kept poor their secret. Luke. They kept their secret. He didn't want to be a secret. Yeah. Emmy caused that. Yeah. yeah. Emmy was like, I want to keep you a secret. He was like, I don't want to be a secret to your, but your dad. And also Gus. too, like, I feel like Emmy should be validated that she kept the secret as long as she did because her brother reacted exactly the way that she thought he was going to fucking react. Because she ran right to him, passed all her family up. I don't up. give a shit. I, I don't know. I Validation. Like, I, I don't think that there was any though. way that he could have found out that he would not have reacted the same way he did. You could have told him when you started dating and fucking him. <laughs> It was a very realistic it, reaction. It, it, like, it slowly <laughs> kind of happens, though. Yeah. I mean, like, they weren't like, oh, hey, Luke. Hey, Emmy. Let's go hit it behind the shed now. Like, that wasn't what but happened. Weren't they, but weren't they really? Because they were doing it behind the house, in the guest house, where her dad was sleeping. And Wes <laughs> no, almost just found them out because Wes showed up at the door. He was wearing his shirt. Yeah. No. So Wes I feel like knew. I feel Wes like knew the whole time. Yeah, I'm convinced that everybody in this book knew except, except for, for Gus. Gus. So it's not her but fault look, that he's a dumbass. But look at Gus. Even the dog knew. <laughs> even even Waylon knew. Was better. I think Gus is going to have a really good, and this is where I long. I really adapt or and I adopt those characters like Nesta and Actar. I really love those characters that are going to have a really good character growth, and I think Gus is one of them. Yeah. I hope so. I hope so. He has a kid. I'm not, he needs to grow. I'm not a huge fan of like the whole single dad trope. So like I will 100% read <gasps> his Shut book. Shut the fuck up. But it's not, it's not a you trope like on my list. that dad I, I don't dislike it. It's just they're not books that I seek Why? out. You don't like men taking care of their children? It's not about <laughs> that. <laughs> Listen, it's that's not, not about, about that. That is hot as hell. <laughs> but I also come from like a single dad trope. I got with Joe when he, yes. when he had a kid and you're, I was like, that's not You're like hot. living, so. you lived a single dad trope. I feel like that's a little different. Like, and it, it's just not trope. something that I seek out in literature. I don't have anything against it. It's not a trope I hate. It's just I don't normally seek out. It doesn't interest you yes. to like yeah. go and be like, oh, that's what this book is about and yes. I don't know anything else. Nah. Yes. Yeah, like, I feel the same like way. if I were reading a book and it happened, then I wouldn't be upset about it. But like in my reality, kids complicate things. So yeah. as much as I appreciate and respect the single dads and who knows, like I'm married, I'm never going to be in that that relationship. But to me, it's just if I'm thinking about what would happen in my real life. I wouldn't, you know, kids are just complicated. Well, I would hope that if something was to happen to Joe and I, I we have two kids, you know, between me and him. So I would hope the next guy that I'd be with would be okay with it. Because, like, it's hard to say I'm not okay with your kid, but you have to be okay with mine. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, yeah. I definitely think that that's going to be a really interesting book. I'm really excited about Wes's book. That Golden Retriever, man, is just going to be. Yeah, he's just so he's sweet. Oh, and going back to how he punched him in the face. I okay. feel like that's such a man thing to do, but it's <laughs> so. It's a cowboy so, book. It is. Yeah. But also, <laughs> like, I hear guys talk about, they're like, women are so complicated because they say one, like, petty thing to each other and then don't talk for weeks. <laughs> or they can talk bad about each other forever but pretend to be friends. But guys, like, you know exactly how they feel. And you can punch one in the face and then be fine the next day. It's almost like you have to get out that that energy or, like, that machismo It's kinda. guy shit. Boy yeah. math. That's my problem with it, though, is it wasn't done with after that. That's my problem. Yeah, with Gus that's true. Yeah, that's my it, problem. He did, but he, went, but he went to Wes's house. Yeah, like a week. 
That show, uh, it, no, it was, it was, a, was it, a week? it was, it was because Luke was complaining about like how long it had taken. Like, he's like, I wish that Emmy would just like come see me, but she's like respecting Gus, like cooling off and everything. Oh, and yeah, it was okay, definitely, it was definitely a period of time. But think about it. Okay. Gus probably got, he probably boy, boy math, right? He probably got insecure. He's the only one in the family that didn't know. Yeah. So then he's stewing boys, men in general, stew. Yeah. You got him over there also running the farm. So he's also busy and he's a single dad. He yeah. probably just didn't even think to click to take care of something so urgent, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I liked how Wes or Gus showed up at Luke's house and was like, I'm not going to, I'm not okay with it, but I will be. Yeah. So let make my little sister happy. Right. Exactly. But only and that, after he found out it wasn't Luke's idea. I don't think he was going to really forgive him. No, he didn't find out it wasn't Luke's idea until he showed up at the house. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But he didn't right. say he was going to forgive him until or, like, after. be okay he did, with I don't it until he after. Said he forgave him. Until he, he was, was like, going to try. After he was like, oh, it was Emmy's idea to keep it a secret. I'm interested. And he was like, yeah. And he was like, well then. Yeah, I'm interested to Maybe. see going forward in the rest of the books if it touches on any of that dynamic anymore. Like, like are Teddy I think like it would have to. I think it will. Are Teddy yeah. and Gus going to keep their stuff a secret from That's what Luke I'm saying. And Emmy? Maybe, yeah. you know maybe we will. have maybe we have I don't a full think circle. they are. Mm. Uh, I, I don't think Teddy's that kind of girl. I was going to say I don't I, know if Teddy can keep her big mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's too well, open. Not but only it might that, come for, full circle. Yes, that's true. And that true. might be Lila Sage's whole point uh-huh. Maybe. in writing it the way she did. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people think that everything has to make sense at the end. But when you have so many books in the same world, it really doesn't. Right. And we don't have to, like, right now, say when book four releases, and you're like, well, shit, I, we still don't know if Gus and Luke's okay. Right. Then we can talk about if that was not done well. But maybe... Maybe it's gonna take book three to be okay. I feel yeah. like I would Teddy. Hope not. I feel like Teddy is too big of a character to give a shit yeah, what anybody else true. thinks to hide anybody. Like I unless, mean, unless unless she like turns into a softer person for him or something. Fuck no, I don't, I don't see know. It either. I mean, is she's that too strong? Like, is that digressing or is it character development? They literally, I guess we'll have to see how it's written. It could be because it could be maturity. Right, could, right. If yes. she's just. If she's disrespectful of other people's feelings and just does whatever the fuck she wants to do, maybe it could be her meeting halfway. But this is all just speculation. They literally we'll refer say, to her nah. as a guard dog. Like, Ralph. they literally say guard dog Teddy. Listen, <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know that somebody I would describe as a guard dog is the type of person to step the fuck down for anything. I, maybe that's what I did see in a screenshot to you guys where Teddy uh, threatens to... Chop Luke's dick off. I would do it for any of you guys. Oh, yes. No, yes, no, no. Yes. Thank so you. she doesn't threaten to chop his him. dick off. He and eat it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. So they were talking <laughs> with I a have nice Keontae. Here. Hold on. Hold on. I have the quote here. So the quote is My first thought was that she probably cut off that guy's dick and fed it to him. And I think that they were talking about Kenny when Kenny stood Emmy up at prom or whatever and ended up taking somebody else. Mm-hmm. And she had told Luke, Emmy had told Luke that Teddy already took care of it. And right before Teddy like burst into Luke's office to basically like try to get him to confess his love for Emmy, he was like thinking that those were his thoughts. I see. Yeah. I'm so it wasn't find, that she threatened oh, to cut off. No, his yeah, he did. did. Oh, did he she? said she uh-huh. said I had to find it because I was like, no, she she okay. did. She said, if you hurt my best friend, I'll cut your dick off and feed it to you. Yeah. Yep. So and twice. I did it to you guys and I was like, I would do this for any of you guys. Yes, of course. <laughs> so twice because, now. Listen, it's a it's a man. I man love world. Teddy. Yep. <laughs> so, I love Teddy. Yep, we're for the girls. I think that also what was really great about this book and going off of not all the characters, but just, just Emmy, really, mm-hmm. her mental rep representation was mm-hmm. really well done yes. between mm-hmm. uh, Emmy's panic attacks yep. and her ADHD. A hundred percent. That's was something that really hit home. Uh, mm-hmm. I think for I think all of yes. us. Well, oh, we were yeah. we were talking about this the other day, and I know Tara said she listened yep. to the audiobook well but you listen to the, the preface disclaimer. or whatever yes. the preface and that it just dis- had a disclaimer that emmy had adhd so i read the 
like Kindle and I just skip through those yeah. unless I have to listen to it because it's the audiobook. <laughs> I don't really care. I don't care what the author has to say about anything until after I've finished it. Oh, there's a super cute Q&A at the end of the audiobook though too. Is it really? I did yeah. see that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to go yeah. back. Really? Yeah. Well, I'll be getting the audio when we leave here. Anyways, <laughs> so I think I was... I don't even think I was, but maybe a chapter or two chapters in, and I'm in the group chat going, this bitch has ADHD. And so legitimately, my note, when she was telling Luke about her ADHD was, whoop, there it is. Yep. <laughs> because I felt so much of myself. And she talks about, like, the anxiety, and she talks about how hard it is to feel accomplished when mm -hmm. you never stop trying to achieve things. Yep. And that is something that comes with ADHD. Nothing that you ever do feels good enough because you're you're constantly looking for what's next and what ladder can I climb and what else can I do? What else can I add into things? And I think that like even just being on the rodeo circuit for as long as she was and I think a lot of things hit her all at one time having a big mm -hmm. accident and she felt like that accident kind of like took away from her accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Like when you Awkward. ride like that competitively and you have all of these years of experience and to lose that one time, but that part kind of almost upset me because for the first, I don't know how many chapters, there was this huge buildup mm -hmm. to her accident and then when they finally reveal that it was an accident and what had happened, I feel like we got very like minimal details like she hinted that there was a head injury but then also this is happening a month after the accident so I how was serious she got emotional i thought she got aspect. thrown off her she got she thrown got off. dusted yes that's the term yeah, yeah right. she is, did. is dusted yeah but i think it was more about the emotional impact because she lost something her very similar happened to her mother okay. right and it's like, i think that that's what caused the the spurring of yeah. everything well, else the the I fear and the anxiety I feel like it was a bigger build up than it needed to be you know what i right. mean like For not i a lot of expected because i yeah. kept like every time that they kind of gave us a little bit more information i was like okay but like did she break something like this is a month later like has she recovered because they didn't reveal mm -hmm. that that was how her mom had died until a little ways after she you know like kind of confessed what the accident was to Luke and everything yeah so I think that I was just expecting more because I felt like there was so much of a build-up mm -hmm. to it I think to keep it short Lila yeah. Sage maybe didn't give that Many yeah. details because yeah. this book is uh, under 400 pages. Yeah. So it's like around the 360 mark. And I think that she had to get so much done, especially with the family dynamic and everything she did, mm -hmm. that maybe she just didn't detail it as well as you wish she would have. Mm -hmm. So you could have done with an extra 100 pages if it gave you the details. Yeah. Where I think it was perfect. Well, no, I mean, I'm not I'm not saying that I'm missing the details. I just think it was too much of a built up. Like, I think we could have gotten gotcha. some of that information earlier yeah and it's still been okay because i like 90 percent of my notes are like um yeah like was it an accident did she get thrown was she injured how has she recovered this quickly but again i feel like that's why she didn't tell anybody like she felt like she didn't have a reason to be reacting okay. that way okay mm. yep that's that's a really good point. And I that's actually fair. really like that because when she came home, mm -hmm. she was very hush hush. She didn't even tell Teddy about it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. only person she ingrained that information in was Luke. Was Luke. Yeah. And yeah. Luke became her confidant. Yeah. Therapist. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, however you want to put it, Luke became her therapist and that's who she really confined in. And that's why I think their relationship was so well and why it was so well like you know, yeah. was done so well because she had that person. I wish she would have told Teddy. Yeah, if I were Teddy, I feel like I'd be pissed. She like, was. Teddy was, I think Teddy wasn't pissed. She was more like, oh, why have you been carrying right, that? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. exactly And then she was just it. like, go get me Luke. And Teddy right. was like, you're not caring about yourself. You right. have Luke. And that's when she told right. Luke, she loves you because Teddy doesn't help ask for anyone and she asked for you. Yeah, yep. that's and my that, favorite line. That was just, that was, that's one of my favorite lines too. And I was just like, I, how many of us? Though, she can take care of herself, yeah. I said. I know she can, but you made sure she didn't have to do it alone. That's what yeah. the, I think the dad says. Uh, was that the dad or was that Teddy? I'm pretty sure that's the dad. Well, my book and doesn't want to okay. It's mine. Either way, the dad noticed it. Yes. The, daddy, the dad noticed it. Wes noticed it. 
Teddy noticed it. Gus was oblivious, which Gus is. Oh, Gus. yeah. Teddy, <laughs> um, she asked for you. Um, Emmy never asks for anything. She just puts her head down and deals with things mm-hmm. in the way that she knows how mm-hmm. by kicking shit around in her own brain. But she asked for you. And Teddy, yeah. I think Teddy was low key hurt. Yeah. But yeah. I think she mm-hmm. realized that there was nothing to be heard about because she had someone. Right. If yeah. she had no one, if it was you, mm-hmm. Holly, or Tara, or, yeah. you know, Cassie, if you had no one and you weren't telling me, I'd be more pissed off if you, and l- then you have a Matt or Scott yeah. or Nathaniel, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you have someone. Yeah. I'd be more hurt if you were doing it by yourself. Yeah. yeah. I, Emmy wasn't. I don't know. I'm a jealous bitch. <laughs> Tell yeah. me first, man. <laughs> I feel like I relate a lot with Emmy, though, because, like, when something happens to me that I get, like, really anxious about mm-hmm. or, like, and I, I, I mean, I get anxiety ridden a lot. Yeah. Like, I, I don't always portray it, but, I mean, I have a lot of stuff that happens in it. Some of it really is stuff that I should probably talk about more or tell somebody about. And a lot of times I'll wait till, like, a month or two later and then I'll be like, oh, by the way, this whole thing's happening. And somebody's like, oh, my God, Tara, I'm sorry. Are you OK? And I'm like, yeah, I've dealt with it. Like, it's you know yeah i can talk I about silent. it openly and then like yeah. now we're done so i feel like i really related to emmy in that way mm-hmm. because i do the same thing about a lot of big things little things like just different things I, and i guess i i can see that my my best friend she does that a lot i have two best friends not the one in this room <laughs> but the other one who lives across Only the two? country i love you kimberly i have lots of best friends but specifically kimberly because i know she's, she's my best friend i know you're listening thank to this you. thank god uh, for kimberly. that but she we love keeps you, Kimberly. Everything inside, and she'll tell me stuff, and I'm like, "Bitch, why didn't you tell me?" Because I'm an open book. Like any single thing that happens to me, I'm like, "Oh my god, the so sky you're is a falling." Teddy. I am basically, I am a Teddy. Um, but I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I tell everybody everything. I always say, like, I wish I was mysterious, but I talk too much to be mysterious. <laughs> and all the time, I'm like, why didn't you tell me this? I'm always running to you and telling you mm-hmm. the most insignificant things in my life. And yeah. she holds everything inside and said, well, I don't want to bother you. Like, bitch, bother me. That's what I'm here for. Like, yeah. I want you to bother it me. It is why we So, Kimberly, exist. bother me next time. So, what did everyone think of the cover art? I thought it was so. It was so. It was really beautiful. Yes, it was. It was like a good cartoony, but not too cartoony. It, it was, was very vintage. It was feeling really too. Yes. yes, yeah, very vintage. <clears throat> I loved it. Um, but not in the, like, 90s vintage Fabio on the cover way. It was, like, in comic a, like, book. vintage art. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Whoever did that cover art is just... Tar has the book, um, but mm-hmm. it's beautiful. And yes. Swift and Saddled is just as pretty. Yep. I feel like that's how that Rain Me In book looks, though, too. Mm-hmm. So now I wonder, like, if this book gets big, if they're all going to start looking like that. It's my only qualm with it Because I think is- that happens. Luke needs a freaking baseball cap, not yes. the cowboy hat. Okay. Yes. Yes. The, the, I'm like, like no, I, I read something. I, I was going through and like making notes and little tabs in there uh, last night. And as I was talking about, I'm like, yeah, Luke wears a baseball cap all the time. Like he's kind of like a cool boy cowboy. Like he's not he's like a bad straight boy cowboy. He's yes. not like a straight cowboy though in his cowboy hat. Like he only wears that when he's riding. Right. When he's doing anything else around the ranch, he's got his baseball cap on Tiny. and his like muscle tee and mm-hmm. that's how he's described and I'm like I would have liked to have seen that a little bit portrayed and I know that the authors don't really have much say in like the cover art yeah. and it could be done by somebody who does or hasn't read it um, but like I wish that people who wanted to do cover art would learn a little bit about the characters you're putting on the front of your books yeah, yeah. Um, or Lila could have been like it just kind of hey. made me be like yeah oh that is not Luke yeah, and it doesn't look like like him. maybe it that's looks Gus. like a little boy <laughs> preempting you for the next you see novel. What I'm saying? It looks like a yeah. perfect little boy. Uh, but okay, if we don't go off the character base, say you found this book in Barnes and Noble, would that draw you to it? Oh yes. yeah, yeah, for sure. I judge books by their covers a hundred percent. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I don't. Yeah, I it think is super. It, it, it is would be a lie. Cute. It is. I just like once I started thinking about it, I was just oh, like, 100 percent. That's yeah. not Luke though. I want to say Luke. Maybe that's yeah. the loser yeah. she left in college. Maybe we need a Pinterest. <laughs> I need, need a, a Pinterest. Oh. I need a compilation video of okay. men in ball caps mounting horses <laughs> because she mentions how yep. hot that Luke looks mounting horses, and I just need a whole bunch of men I mean, in I ball caps mounting probably horses. Probably find one. I mean, we'll look. so somebody send me that YouTube video. I will thank um, you forever. So, is there any quotes that stood out to you guys? I mean, I've given y'all all of mine. But my favorite quote, person. Oh, go ahead. I lied. 
a lad. And it goes back to the tall thing. So I'm not going to I'm not lad, man. I'm not going to go on my my rant again about tall people in literature, but Emmy does say that she is 5 foot 9. Thank you very much. <laughs> Love you, Lila. And one of my favorite quotes is Emmy she says, I was a tall woman, and most of the men I'd slept with hadn't been much taller than me. I didn't know I minded until I was with Luke. The way he was able to pick me up and fucking manhandle me was hot as hell. And I'm just letting y'all know. Can't relate. That is why we need five foot nine women and up in literature. Yes, very Because true. we deserve those things. Yeah, and we deserve bitches, that representation. Tall bitches reserved to be kinky too. I'm done. Well, uh, mine's not tall related because I'm I'm short myself. Me too. My favorite quote was between Wes and Emmy. Emmy said, "You didn't ask me why I came home," and Wes said, "I don't care why you're here, only that you are." Yeah, I love that. Very cute. That's Golden Retriever. I can't wait for his book. I'm pumped. I had a lot of like really favorite quotes just about like Luke and Emmy like when he's just like talking to her and it's not even like the most like severe stuff but like one of them is um when they're again they're talking about her career and she's like you're not gonna ask me about why I'm making my career if I'm making a mistake and he says no honestly I'm curious about it but the only person who needs to feel good about your decision is you Emmy and I'm like that right there is like the kind of person that everybody needs in their life. Yeah. Because, like, you need somebody who to be able to support you, whether they know exactly what's going on or whether they understand it. As long as they can tell you, like, you have to feel good about it. Mm -hmm. That's We all need somebody in our life like that. I agree. Yep, exactly. I don't have any favorite quotes <laughs> because I did the audio. And in the future, I'm going to have more. I'm trying to do more physical books and more Kindle books so that I can annotate and highlight. I guess I'll be negative and say the one thing I didn't like about this book that everybody else disagreed with me on is I don't like a whole lot of filler. And there was a scene where Luke went back home because, like, oh. his mom was, like, which he's kind of estranged from her, kind of, but not really. really. Yeah. Yeah, but oh, then, then she raised him and then kicked him out. Right. And so did. she yeah. called him and was like, your stepdaddy's missing and I need you to come over. And he went over there and... <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way that you said it. I tried to hold it in. Luke, I need you here. You missing. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to sell the ranch. Anyway, um, <laughs> they're from Western, the Western U.S., not Southern. Okay. They're, they're not Southern on my ranchers. Parade. I, Western all, ranchers. It's a different, it's a different like sound. To though. me, they it's all not, talk. Not as country. They all talk like cornbread. Anyway, so <laughs> just straight cornbread. Like when Cassie says, I'm five nine. <laughs> okay, so which Veggie Tales character hurt your feelings? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love all the Veggie Tales, but uh, th there was a scene where he went back home. <laughs> Jen, are you going to be able to make it over there? <laughs> Sorry, I'm so hilarious. Um, but there was a scene when Luke went over to his mom's house, and his mom was like disrespectful to Emmy, and it was just like, and the stepdad disappeared, and. It was just a weird scene, and then you hear at the very end, it's like, well, the stepdad came back. It was weird that he disappeared off the grid for a couple days around Las Vegas, but I'm sure we all know what that was about. So, like, what was the point of that? Like, Well, so it gave filler. Emmy the opportunity. And I don't like filler. But no, it I gave agree. Emmy the opportunity to defend Luke. But he and didn't need and, he gave, never, and he's never had it. Yes, and he says that. He says... That he was shocked that Emmy stood up for him because he's never had anybody to do that before. And I think that Luke deserves that just as much as anybody else does. I, guess. I, guess. I think what the author was doing, to be honest, was give us another side of Luke. We yeah. had Emmy so much in this book that yes. you saw Luke just being a bar owner, being mm -hmm. a therapist, being and going to the ranch. Being going to the ranch. You didn't see the full picture. We also got little tidbits that his family wasn't the greatest because he was being raised mm -hmm. by Emmy's dad and being taken in by this family that he didn't even know. They met at school. They didn't grow up. Like, they, they didn't. Like, the parents didn't hang out. Yeah. He literally mm -hmm. had no lunch. Gus shared Gus a sandwich. a lunch and yep. was like, come home with me. Like, t let me take you to parents that will love you. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I think that that was... A way for us to see a different side of Luke and where Luke came from. No one, I didn't know at the beginning that his 
st- uh, stepdad kicked him out or anything like that. I know he had an estranged relationship, but you yep. didn't see you didn't see how estranged until his brother came in, his half brother, mm-hmm. step brother, yeah. yes, yeah, half brother. Which I, I came in and was like, get the you fuck out of my here. trailer. Yeah, yeah. So, so I feel like it ex- it, it kind of explains, and, and I feel like. We all have, like, different types of, like, broken families that we've seen or that we're used to. And I feel like throughout most of the book, you learn that even though Emmy's family is slightly broken because they're, the mom's not there, they are all all in for each other, all there for each other. Mm-hmm. And it's just this strong group of people, um, you know, going back to like why they feel like Gus is going to freak out on him, you know, because he'll do anything to protect his sister. And Luke never had that. And Luke moves in to be kind of like a side by side with this other family. And it it kind of touches on it, but you don't get to see why mm-hmm. you don't get to see why that connection was made and why that connection was so strong. So I feel like that whole scene is to show you like you know, when they talk about how Luke was just a bad person and like treated everybody bad and nobody knew what was going on. Cause she talks about it all the time. Like, Oh, he's changed. He was never like this. Like what happened to him? You don't know why you don't know what he went through. Right. It was just a glimpse. And so it kind of gives that aspect. filler. Yeah. And it shows how much he's grown. Yeah. Like imagine if he did still live with his mom. Like it just didn't give me anything. He would be like his half brother, you know, who sells drugs. (laughs) Yeah. It just I love that they incorporated it. I don't know why. (laughs) And again, it's very yellow (laughs) stuff. But (laughs) it was like (laughs) apparently out in Montana. That's just where all the meth heads are out on the ranches out (laughs) there. Like in the small too. Well no, we don't have meth heads, we have crackheads. (laughs) Um, yes. Crackhead energy. But I'm just like, I don't know why, like every cowboy show you hear about or you read about, you hear about, or you watch about, and there's always like, oh, there's a, a trailer out in the middle of nowhere and they're all doing that. Doing some breaking bad I'm gonna tell shit. the sheriff on you, he's my daddy's best friend. It's everyone. My daddy. <laughs> and everyone. The but since we're on negative, I only have one negative out the whole book. It's the only negative I wrote. I didn't down. know you had anything negative. So I I'm did excited I have to one. hear. I hate sugar as a pet name. No, sugar. I hate it. Oh, I do too. It, it I feel me. like if Ooh. it's being followed by whiskey spit in my mouth, I'm cool with it. <laughs> oh, the whiskey. <laughs> that was another scene that we all really love. This is very. This is not smutty. This is spicy. Yeah. There's yeah. a. Three spicy scenes, I think, or three or four. And one of them, uh, Luke. But, like, the whole book, the inner monologue oh. is them oh. wanting, oh. like, yeah. undressing each other with their clothes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't yeah. consider like, a with their eyes. smutty book. Yeah. Um, I consider yeah. a spicy book. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a difference between smut and spice, I think. Oh, yeah. There's a bigger plot. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Um, I know one scene that we all really liked is when Luke uh, spit that whiskey right into mm. Emmy's mouth. <laughs> that was. Yes. Oh, my that God. Was that was so And the hot. way that he talks without the sugar is dirty i think if i'm like uh, like sugar like i'm trying to do it like country like come over here sugar like it's it's i like it i, I dig a sugar i, I didn't mind it. i don't think there's many i, pet names I don't like enjoy it. oh like look tara high five <laughs> i did not like it but was, i like all the like princess like you know cutie pine like i like matt I calls like me princess i could call Sorry. princess all the time i'm a motherfucking princess look at me <laughs> so wait so matt comes up to you and goes hey cutie pie let me shoot some whiskey in your mouth <laughs> no but i wish you would <laughs> <laughs> That Next was, time, I'm just going to open up my was, mouth like a baby bird. <laughs> Put it in there, sugar. That was so hot. I did not expect it to be that hot. No. no. And I was over there, like, fanning myself, reading on the Kindle. My kids are in bed, thank God. And um, I'm just like, damn it, Joe's working. Because I'm like, whoo, that's getting me hot. You come home with a bottle of whiskey and just, just gargle it after you're done. You, you got know, some bottle four roses on some your way home. Scenes, Let's go. And I, and Cassie might it's relate. It's Nathaniel's favorite. Some of the scenes that I read in these spicy books, I'm like almost embarrassed if my kids are up or if someone's like watching me. Because I'll be reading them and I'll be like, yeah, Ooh, okay. I cannot keep like, a straight face. I, I mean, I read either. them in the break room at work. 
<laughs> well, good for you. Um, like we are not the same. I'm listening to the audio book and I, like I'll listen to it like on my lunch and I just turn it on my car so I can do like other stuff on my phone or eat or whatever. And, mm-hmm. I don't, and then like I'll see somebody walk by and if I'm like, wait, what is playing right now? Mm-hmm. And how loud is this? Like you get not yeah. I get a little yeah. like but nervous. Like, like yeah. People are going to judge me. I don't need that in my life. It's not, but I think we all related where we all really, really like that scene. So I yes, think that was very one, hot. That was super hot. And Lila does really well with her spicy scenes. I will give yes. that girl yep. credit. Mm-hmm. Dude, the, some of those scenes I was like, okay, Lila. Yes. Yeah, it was very. Give the it whole to me. Thing was I cannot. Really great. And also, this is her debut. This is the only thing I'll say in this last thing. I can only imagine how she's going to be three to two to three books in. Right. Yeah. If she keeps progressing, because this was a banger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A banger in more ways than one. (laughs) I loved it. (laughs) It was just. It was. We definitely recommend the Lit Talkers. Do recommend this book? Yep. A hundred percent. So done and dusted. Lit Talker recommended. I'm sure that we could continue (laughs) to talk about this all day, but we won't keep y'all's attention too much longer. So our next February episode, we're going to stick with the romance. We're going to have a little discussion about a court of sugar and spice. Yes. Oof. And by Rebecca Kennedy. <laughs> by Rebecca or Kennedy. Kenny. Sorry, Kenny. Kenny. Listen to her, not me. And then we're going to talk about our favorite romance tropes and our least favorite. So that's going to be really exciting. Absolutely. That is not going to be happy that's Valentine's gonna... Day, everybody. Yes, happy yes. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Please let us know what you're doing in the comments. If you and your significant other are going out on the town or if you have special getaway plans, let us live through you because um, I will be working. Valentine's I'll be Day. home with my kid. <laughs> we'll be uh, celebrating early by going to Monday Night Raw. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the 12th. Tar, you and uh, Nathaniel, anything? We don't have any plans. We'll see what happens. But we hope you have a very safe and very loving Valentine's Day, if you get our drift. Um, And we will see you guys back on the 21st. Sounds great. We'll talk to you then. Bye. Bye. See you later, sugar. Bye.